Hey everybody. Today we're talking about absolute and conditional convergence of infinite series. Throughout this talk you should keep this example in mind. 1 minus a half plus a third minus a quarter and so on. It's the so-called alternating harmonic series. It converges by the alternating series test. 1 over n is decreasing and going towards 0 and the series is alternating. Um, however, if you throw out the pluses and minuses and just look at 1 plus a half plus a third plus a quarter and so on, you get a divergent series, the harmonic series. So here we have a situation where the series converges but really only because of the pluses and minuses between the terms. This is called a conditionally convergent series. Let's get an official definition. We start with a convergent series, sum of a n. There's two things that can happen. Either when we take the absolute values of all the a n's, so now there are pluses between all the terms, the series converges. In that case, we say that the sum of a n converges absolutely. On the other hand, the sum of the absolute values could diverge, in which case the original series, sum of a n, con converges conditionally. Again, the alternating harmonic series is your prototypical example. It's conditionally convergent. It converges, but if you make all those minuses pluses, it's going to diverge. Overall, there's now three possibilities for an infinite series. It can converge absolutely, converge conditionally, or it could just plain diverge. Let's have an example. Sum k equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the k, 1 third to the k. This is a convergent series by the alternating series test. Clearly it's alternating, and the general term, 1 third to the k, is both decreasing and heading towards 0. Is it conditionally convergent or absolutely convergent? Let's look at the series of absolute values. Sum k equals 1 to infinity, 1 third to the k. This is a geometric series, and the ratio is 1 third. The geometric series converges when r is between negative 1 and 1, so this is going to be convergent. By the way, we can also get the sum of this. The sum of a geometric series that converges is s equals a over 1 minus r, where a is the first term and r is the ratio. In this case, that's 1 half. Therefore, the original series converges absolutely. This is a really important fact. If a series converges absolutely, then it converges. This gives us a sort of Venn diagram. Um, on the outermost box, we have all series, and then within that con convergent series, and then within that absolutely convergent series. So every absolutely convergent series is a convergent series, and obviously every convergent series is a series. Absolute convergence gives us a useful tool for testing the convergence of an infinite series. Here's an example. Sum from n equals 1 to infinity sine of n over n cubed. This series is kind of a mess. If we just start writing out terms, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to whether sine n over n cubed is positive or negative. However, if we start looking at absolute values, things get better fast. So let's do it. Sum n equals 1 to infinity of the absolute value of sine n over n cubed. Now sine is always less than or equal to 1 in absolute value. So we have this inequality. The series is less than the sum of 1 over n cubed. That's a convergent p series. Therefore, our original series, sum from n equals 1 to infinity sine n over n cubed, converges absolutely, and therefore it converges. 